Hi, I'm Russ. And I'm Meg. And, and this, this is Coco. Coco. And, and we're, we're from, from County Wexford, Ireland. Ireland. And you're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. Here we are. This is where the new loves is gonna be. Now how do I get in there? Where's the driveway? How do I get in here? Is it from over here? It must be from here. I hope so. This has got to be where the driveway is. They don't have any driveway on the main road yet, so... I hope I'm not getting myself stopped. Palm tree! Palm tree right here. Palm tree. Oh, that's exciting. That's the first hole I got close to that one. Do you guys see that? I knew I was going to see a palm tree this trip. Where's the driveway for real here? Here we go. I'm going to park on the street here and uh, go and check in with them. Well, they got me unloaded in less than an hour. Pretty good, really nice guys here. So this is all gonna be a Love's Travel Plaza. It's amazing the amount of work and effort that goes into uh, building these places for us truckers. You know? You know what, th those tanks I had on my trailer, they're uh, the fuel, no, the pardon me, the water oil separators. Same thing that I delivered to that uh, that new loves in Illinois, or was it Wisconsin? Illinois and Wisconsin there. Uh, what these tanks are for is they go under the ground, underneath the fuel fuel pumps, and all the water that drains at those drains at the fuel pump, uh, sometimes oil gets in there, right? And well, loves doesn't want that oil to go back into the ground. You know that might be a law. You probably should be. You don't want that oil to go back in the ground, so they have to separate the oil from the water. And that's what those tanks are that I delivered here. It separates the oil from the water. And just for that, just to keep the ground clean and not pollute the earth, it costs loves tens of thousands of dollars for us to bring down these tanks and this whole system for them, just to keep the place clean, right? That's how much they care about the environment. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Tens of thousands of dollars just so that the oil doesn't go into the ground. Like, I'm not gonna tell you all the exact numbers, but uh, you know, it definitely wasn't cheap for me to bring this down for them, and that's just my wage. Oh, sorry buddy. Didn't see you around the corner there. My bad. 100 meters, turn right on US 280. And you know every travel plaza and every gas station has these same things in the ground. So it's not cheap to be environmentally friendly, but I'm glad they do it. Otherwise, you know, you'd have uh, all those trucks that are leaking oil at the pumps. All of that would just go right into the ground, right into the groundwater. That wouldn't be good. All right, so we're empty. We're going to go uh, 
Head up to Tennessee. The entrance to the right on I-16 West. Macon, Georgia. Macon, bacon, and Macon. Macon, bacon. Bacon, Macon. I can't stop thinking about bacon driving through Macon. I need to find myself some kind of like portable grill or something for the truck that can cook bacon. So that I can have bacon and Macon next time I'm here. I bet you everybody watching from Macon, Georgia right now is just rolling their eyes. Oh, we haven't heard those ones before. Like, come on, you must hear that every day. Everybody who comes through here has got to say Macon Bacon. How can you drive through Macon and not say Macon Bacon? I don't think it's possible. How can you even drive through Macon without thinking about bacon? There's something wrong with you if you don't think about bacon going through Macon. I'll stop. So if you haven't put two and two together yet, we're driving through Macon... I almost said make it bacon. <laughs> Driving through Macon, Georgia right now. Uh, on our way up, we are empty. We have an empty flatbed behind us. Uh, they got me unloaded so quick there. I didn't even have time to grab the camera and uh, show you them taking it off. They used a big uh, big excavator to unload the tanks with some, some toe straps or some chains. I got all my straps off it pretty quickly, and uh, they just had to get their equipment ready. That's why it took a little longer. But by the time, once they got to my trailer, it was done in like 10 minutes. I was there on time. And uh, now we gotta go pick up some steel in Jackson, Tennessee. And that steel is going to Saskatchewan, Canada. I gotta deliver it there on Monday. And today when I'm filming this, it's Thursday. And I want to swing by home on the way so that I can uh, go to my aunt's wedding on Saturday. I'm hoping I can at least make it for the reception. I mean, no, it's on Sunday. I keep thinking it's on Saturday. So if I, I get home Saturday night, I can wake up. We have a family gathering in the morning. We want to take some family pictures. Uh, then in the afternoon, we go to the reception. Right after the reception, I'll have to jump in the truck and head out to Saskatchewan to unload in the morning. We'll see if it'll work out. I don't know if it will. I don't know. But uh, I really want to be there for her. And uh, like I said, we'll see what happens. I'm doing my best. All right, we want to go on Interstate 75 North here. We're on the north side of Atlanta. We just went around the city. It was pretty uneventful, which is good. Well, you want to come in here, don't you? No? Okay. You want to get in my lane? Put your signal on. Meters. Keep to the left on I-75 North and then keep to the left in 1.4 kilometers. All right, here we go. 75 North. What a spider web of highways here. I can sort of remember from what two years ago when we went this way through here. Head up this way, and I think. Oh, whoa, 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 okay, okay, everyone's getting a little scared, okay, all right, find your safe space, find your safe, okay, all right, we're merging with more traffic, careful. You know, I've actually been pretty impressed with this ride through Atlanta today, everyone has been, like, pretty respectful, everyone's been, like, patient, the traffic was moving pretty smoothly, so I guess there wasn't really any chance for impatience. But uh, no one was really... I, I was cut off once by one guy. He was super cool driving his grandma's Nissan with uh, super black tinted windows, so you know he's extra cool. But, yeah, he cut me off and then brake checked me once, I think. It felt like it. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I can't, couldn't tell because he, like, he had no windows. They were just black pieces of glass. I don't know what, what he was doing, but making life a little difficult for me for about three minutes, and then he was gone. I don't know. In 500 meters, keep to the left on I-75. A lot of empty flatbeds around here. Look at this. No loads for us in Atlanta, apparently. In 300 meters, keep to the left on I-75. And we can't just take any load either. Like, for me, I'm going a full day's drive to go pick up this steel in... Uh, in Tennessee. Luckily, both these loads are really good paying loads, so it doesn't hurt me that much. 
but it, it still hurts. Yeah, a whole day driving empty isn't what I'd like to do, but you know, we, we can't just take any load. The load has to be going directly back to Canada. I can't pick up a load in the United States and then drop it off inside the United States. That's illegal. They call it interstating. Uh, you have to be an American citizen to do that. Otherwise, you know, obviously I'd be stealing one of these fine people's jobs, like this guy here or that guy over there. That would be a load for them to take. They're Americans, you know? For me, being a Canadian citizen, I, on this road for 14 I, that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, Karen, but thanks for trying. I have to go straight back to Canada. So uh, I dropped off my freight that I picked up in Canada, went straight to my destination, dropped it off. Now I gotta go to my reload and go straight back to Canada. I mean, I don't think they're too picky if I take a scenic route here and there or to avoid traffic or a detour. But you know, I'm picking up a load in Tennessee. They're gonna have some serious questions for me if I were to like get pulled over in California or Utah. Now, what are you doing here? supposed to take the, the direct route back to Canada. So that's why we got to go all the way to Tennessee. That's where our, uh, well, we have a contract there, I guess, and we need someone there to pick up the load because you got to take care of your people, right? And that's one of our people. So we'll pick it up tomorrow. Hopefully I don't got to tarp anything. They said if there's any cardboard boxes on the bed, I got to tarp it. For crying out loud, don't put cardboard on the bed. On the bed, then like don't don't put it in a wooden crate, <laughs> right? We've been over this. Put it in a crate, not a box. It's very hard to tie boxes down onto the deck because they crumple, right? It doesn't really protect whatever's inside there, and then they get all wet in the rain. That's why they want you to tarp it. Eh. Why don't you just put it in a wooden crate and like seal it or something like a, I don't know. I'm, I'm needy. I'm a needy guy. But I have good ideas. I know a lot of these guys who load these trucks, you know, they don't drive the truck, so they don't care. Maybe if they heard it from someone who actually drives the truck, they'll do it differently, which makes it easier on all of us, right? At least easier on me, I don't know. How many lanes we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lanes in each direction. <whistles> this guy on my right is having trouble staying in his lane. You know I'm here, right, bud? Oh, he's got subwoofers in there too. Can you hear that? Just pounding the G unit in there. Holy. Gangsta, gangsta. All right. Oh, now he wants to come in here. He put his signal on. Well, I'm right beside you, buddy. Go on as fast as I can. You can either speed up and go in front of me or slow down and go behind me, but I'm occupying this lane. Should have thought of that before you ended up at this exit. Damn. Yeah. Well, don't take off my back bumper. Yikes, he cut in so close behind me, almost took my bumper off. I guess it would have taken his bumper off. My trailer probably would have been fine. Oh, he's coming past us on the left now. Here comes J-Unit. Is J-Unit still a thing? Probably not, that's dating me. <laughs> it was the thing when I was in high school. I don't know what the, the biggest rappers are of today. I've moved past those days. I'm more into uh, country myself. Country music's my favorite music. And uh, uh, I've, I've gotten more into classic rock now since I married Brit too. She loves classic rock like Motley Crue and Def Leppard. Never used to listen to them before, but now I should listen to them. I like Five Finger Death Punch and stuff like that. Every now and then, but my favorite is country, country music. And back in the day, I tell you, whoo, when I was cool. And subwoofers in my car and everything. You'd hear me coming a mile away. They're rattling the windows when I pulled up. Oh, I was that kid, I know, I know. I'll never live it down. Do you wanna be in here? Cause you look like you wanna be in here, Mr. Civic. Turn your signal on. Don't just try to drive aggressively and get in front of me. Turn your signal on and I'll help you. If you don't put your signal on, I'm not making way for you. You can't read your mind. Chattanooga, look at that traffic backed up on that side of the road. It's already been like that for like five miles. This is the second backup too. Once they get through this mess, they got another backup just like this down in Georgia. It never ceases to amaze me how whenever I start talking, you have to talk too, Karen. 
And then we'll sit here in silence for like five hours and suddenly I start talking and you have so much to say. Is it like my voice? Is it my voice that triggers you? So there was an accident up uh, on the other side of Chattanooga on the other side. Now, look at this traffic, it's still lined up on that side. Still lined up. I feel so bad for those drivers because they have no idea. <laughs> Half an hour down the road, they're gonna have to go through another one just like this. To the left on I-24 West I-59. No one cares what you have to say, Karen. Just saying. Yeah. Why don't you go find a manager to complain to? Still backed up. I know you guys haven't seen my face much. Karen! I'm starting to get frustrated. I just want to talk to my friends. What was I saying? Oh, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I know you guys haven't seen much of my face today, or yesterday, but I figured you'd rather look at the road anyway, look at the sights. No use uh, torturing you with my face too much, you know what I mean? It's still backed up. Ay, yay, Chattanooga. Yikes, your bridge connections are worse than Manitoba. Yikes. Still backed up. Wow, well, let's see how far this goes. All the way around the corner here. This has gone through the entire city already. The accident was like outside the city. Well, just outside the city on the south side. Just gonna be all the way around up the hill because I know we go here, then around to the right. Yep. Backed all the way up here, all the way up around the hill. Wow. That's gotta be close to 10 miles already. Glad we're not going that way. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you can see that string of lights all the way to the right. The road curves to the right here. You can see that string of lights all the way along the base of that hill there. Or I guess they would call that a mountain probably. I call it a hill. I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick that up. You just have to trust me if you can't see it. Wow. Now that's one of the longest backups I've seen in a while. Then again, I've been spending most of my time out on the prairies and in western Canada and stuff. In North Dakota, South Dakota, Illinois, where there's not quite as much traffic as down here on the interstates. But yeah, there you can see it, right? I hope nobody has to go to the bathroom over there. That's always the worst part of getting stuck in traffic. And traffic that's like creeping too, like not traffic that's stopped and you can get out and go in the ditch or whatever, or whatever you want to do, go behind a bush. Traffic that's just creeping forward, so you have to keep moving, right? But you gotta go to the bathroom so bad, it's the worst thing in the world. And one final scene for you guys, we're coming Two into... Wow. Exit 85. Wow. Road, DRFE right drive, Jackson. I was not planning that, Karen just does that. Hadn't heard from you in like three hours, Karen. <sighs> what I was saying is we're in Jackson, Tennessee. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to the pilot here to see if there's room. Uh, the pilot is pretty much just down the road from where we got to pick up our steel tomorrow. And it's only nine o'clock, but I'm kind of thinking it's going to be full. But I'm, uh, let's hope we're lucky. I'm not even going to fuel up tonight. If I find an open spot, I'm just going to snag it fuel tomorrow. Exit 85 coming up here on Christmasville Road. I like it. So I've realized that today and most of yesterday was all just dash footage. What do you guys think of that? I don't know if you like to see my face more often. I didn't take you on our walk today either. I, I forgot my camera. I meant to do that. I'm sorry guys, but I messed up. But uh, yeah, most days, if you're new here, most days you see a lot more of me, not just the road. I do, I try to do a lot different things. I try to do different things every day. I mean, making a video every day, sometimes you get into a rut, into a routine, but I always snap out of it and we always come back. Well, I have my doubts. I really do have my doubts that there's gonna be parking here. Uh, well, there's a speedway over here. Maybe they'll have parking. We'll go check the pilot first, but. You know, this part of the country, nine o'clock at night, nah, 
Anywhere else, maybe. I don't know. How do I get in here? See, there's already people parking like along the driveway over here on the right. Practically blocking the driveway. This is the exit, apparently. Well, I remember this pilot now. I've been here many times before. Okay, back in the day, back in the days. Back in the days of the van trailers. Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm backed into a spot, perfect spot. It was all packed when I got here, so I decided to go on fuel today instead. And now I got a parking spot. Someone pulled out just as I was fueling. Good thing I fueled today, because remember I said I was gonna fuel tomorrow? Oh, and by the way, hi, here's my face. I do exist behind the camera. So I, uh, yeah, someone pulled out as I was fueling. What luck, and it's just perfect right right out the the aisleway there wasn't hard to back into because this parking lot is really tight i did not want to stay here I, I i trust myself i can get into any parking spot that's not the problem the problem is if people leave during the night and then someone new backs in beside me i don't trust them i don't want my truck all dinged up because like sure, yeah, maybe we can, I got my dash cam over here. Like we'll record whoever hits me and we'll go after them for the money and get them to fix it. But still, then my truck is down. Like if they damage my truck bad, then I'm without a truck and without a job until it gets fixed. And until we chase them down for the money or, or I have to foot the bill first and then they pay me back. And it's just, it's a big mess. It's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of headaches. I'd just rather avoid it. So I don't even park in parking spots where I think someone might back into me. I wish that they would build truck stops a little differently, more with like more diagonal pull-through parking. Because I know that we can all get into these spots. It's not a matter of can we back in, like you and I, can, can we get into the spot? We know we can. But can the Swift driver among us? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> sorry, sorry Swift drivers throwing you under the bus there a little bit. Uh, I, I apologize. But uh, you, you get the, the joke, right? So, hope you guys have a good night anyways. Sorry, it was mostly just road footage today. I was just giving her. This guy's idling his truck beside me and it's, an, it's a perfect night. Perfect night not to idle it. Why would you waste your fuel? Oh, maybe he's got a, uh, you guys have told me before, maybe they have a sleep apnea machine in there or something that they need to keep the batteries charged. That could be, I shouldn't judge. At least he doesn't have a super loud engine fan. The engine fan just kicked on now, and that's not too bad. I can deal with that. I could always go spin around and nose in. I used to always nose into these spots, right? But ever since my batteries died after I nosed in, I don't do that anymore. Because if, if I'm nosed in here and my batteries die, and I call someone, a tow truck or whatever, to come boost me, they can't even reach me because my batteries are all the way on my truck at the back of the spot, and there's people beside me, so they can't even reach me to give me a boost. So I learned my lesson always back in just in case and what if the truck doesn't start or something right you need them to be able to access the front of the truck i'm tired i'm gonna go to bed tomorrow we pick up our load just around the corner and we start heading home we have 2,000 kilometers or about you know, 1250 let's say 1300 miles to go and we got to do that in two days we're gonna have to uh hope for no traffic and it's gonna be tight but we can do it we can do it. I'm glad I got you here with me because I'm going to need some company. It's going to be some long hours in the next couple of days. Good night. <laughs>